Hey guys, this is section 7.5, Logistic Growth. Uh, we're pretty much about to wrap up this first unit. Um, pretty much everything integrated related. Uh, that rhymes. Um, so you guys have been learning pretty much um, all the different ways that you guys can integrate, right? So here's a little bit of an application um, so normally this lesson in class, I would have you guys watch a little clip and you guys could definitely, uh, watch this on your own time. Um, but there's this very famous clip. If you guys are big fans of Marvel, um, in Avengers infinity war, there was a scene. If you're familiar with it, Thanos takes, uh, Gamora back to his, uh, I believe his home planet, um, and then he's sitting on his throne and he's talking to Gamora. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, the the concept of that story, uh, Thanos is this is this uh, mad titan that believed that uh, the universe is being overpopulated, and he believes that if he gets rid of half of life, uh, everyone will have enough uh, food and resources to eat and such. Okay, but anyways. He, there's a line in, in his uh, movie where he says, you know, it's a simple calculus. Uh, the universe is finite. The resources are, are finite. If life goes unchecked, uh, life would cease to exist. I'm, I'm probably butchering that. But anyways, um, the whole idea of this simple calculus, this is the whole notion of logistic growth. So let me explain it to you guys through a picture here. Back in... Integrated math 3 or even pre-calculus or algebra 2, it doesn't matter. Um, you guys learned exponential growth, okay? You start with an amount and then... Let me draw that one more time. Usually with population, it grows exponentially. So let's say for now, if we ignored um, birth rate, death rate, uh, any type of environmental factor, uh, the amount of resources and land that we have, uh, if you had a population of, let's say, bunnies or rabbits, um, if you start off with two rabbits, they will populate with more babies. And when those babies grow up, they're going to also populate. And it grows at an exponential rate, which is described right here with this red curved function. Now, although that is an accurate description of exponential growth, it's not really realistic. Right? So we introduce this idea of logistic growth, which I'll draw for you here. So... It behaves like an exponential growth, but if you were to consider real-life factors like environmental factors, uh, the amount of land that you have or the amount of food or resources that you have, um, it's not always the case that you're just going to grow exponentially, right? If you consider the death rates or how fast people die out, right, um, it'll change it significantly. So here's what ends up happening. I want you guys to just think about uh, this plot of land right here, all, which I'll represent it as this square, this purple square. If you had um, people on here, eventually I won't have enough space to draw any more people. So what that means is with a finite amount of space, there's only a certain amount of population that's going to fit. Okay. The moment where you guys reach your maximum to the point where you can't fit any more, you call that, and if any of you have taken AP Bio, you call that a carrying capacity. Okay, and this is where the calculus kicks in with Bio. So what happens is, and I'll draw it in green here, you have a population that grows exponentially, but eventually it'll start flattening out to the carrying capacity due to environmental factors. 
So they get really close to this horizontal asymptote right here. We call that the carrying capacity. Pretty much the most that you can hold. Okay? So if you take a look at the nature of this green graph here, at the beginning, it kind of behaves like an exponential, but there's going to be uh, one particular moment where it doesn't grow as fast as it should, okay? Actually, if you notice, if we're talking about concavity here, this green function starts off concave up, and then eventually at some point, it starts to concave down, meaning that the population rate, the growth rate, is actually slowing down, okay? So, that right there in green is your logistic growth. OK, um, so you're going to learn how that differential equation uh, is used and how you actually examine different parts of that equation there. OK, so just another example before we move on. So if you think about a finite amount of space, what if let's say in this example here, all I could fit was 20 people. Right. That is our carrying capacity. Now, what if I took a thousand people and I squeezed them in the same amount of space, right? What do you guys think will happen there? Okay, pause and then play whenever you're ready. So that's the thing with logistic growth now. Let me draw you a different picture. So let's say... we still have a carrying capacity of let's say 20 people right now what if I dropped a thousand people in this plot of land let's just call this a thousand so what do you think would happen right in the long run so the thing is it doesn't matter how much you start out with because if you're basing it on the env environmental factors and usually that's the amount of land even if you put in a thousand people in this in this plot of land here, eventually they will run out of resources and they too will also die out faster and get closer to the carrying capacity. So even if you're under or over the uh, carrying capacity, in the long run, it will correct itself and get closer and closer to that carrying capacity there. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, um, that point right there, I'll talk about one more thing before we move on. That is the point where concavity changes. That is the point where that graph goes from concave up to concave down. Do you guys remember what that point is called? Okay, pause and play whenever you're ready. That is called your point of inflection or your inflection point. Pretty much when your second derivative is equal to zero. Okay? So I'll draw one more thing here. If you were to graph the derivative of that green function, it actually looks a little bit like this. Okay? That's just for the sake of understanding the inflection point. That is where your maximum is, okay? But let's get into the analytical piece that's pretty much the graphical scenario for you guys okay so in short if you're considering real life environmental factors for any population it will eventually reach its carrying capacity okay assuming that you have a finite amount of space and resources okay so this is your generic graph all right there's also another scenario that I'll talk about. And I usually do this in class too, but it's kind of tough to do it through a video lesson. Imagine that all of you guys are in my class, right? Then you guys have all these seats. So let's just say that we have 15 people in there. Okay. And then let's say that, uh, let's say that Simon, right? found out that another student was a millionaire 
Another student in that class was a millionaire. So he starts spreading this rumor out, right? So he tells it to one other person. Okay? So he tells it to uh, Isaac. Okay? So now, on the very first day, the only person that knew about this was Simon. On the second day, Simon decides to tell Isaac. So now, two people know the rumor. Okay? On the third day... Simon and Isaac separately decides to tell two other random people in the class, okay, what that rumor is, okay? Now, keep in mind, when they're spreading out these rumors, they don't know who else knows the rumor. So, throughout this whole process, you could be telling someone the rumor that already knows the rumor, okay? So, if you actually plot out this scenario... It will behave very much like a logistic curve. So let me draw this out again. So right here is pretty much Simon. And then that is going to get progressively higher. But then eventually it will slow down. Now I want you guys to think about the number of people that know the rumor. Why would it slow down eventually? Pause and play whenever you're ready. I'll say that question one more time. So at the beginning, um, at a very fast rate, lots of people in this room, in this BC class, is going to know the rumor. But then eventually at some point, less the amount of people that learn about this new rumor lessens. So why does it, right? So the reason is, the moment you get so many people knowing what the rumor is, eventually the people that you tell it to happen to already know the same rumor. So the amount of new people that know the rumor is going to slowly decrease, which is the reason why that function starts to concave down. Because the rate at which people are finding out about the new rumor decreases, which is why this graph kind of dips a little bit slower. It's not increasing as fast. Now, my question to you guys, pause and play when you're ready. What is the carrying capacity? Okay, based on the scenario, what is the carrying capacity? Pause and play when you're ready. The carrying capacity here would be 15, right? Because there's only 15 people in this room, right? Or in this scenario, at least. So, the thing about that is, there is always going to be a turning point, which we call the point of inflection or the inflection point. There's always going to be a turning point where that rate it starts to decrease. It starts to slow down. Okay? That's going to happen exactly at half of the carrying capacity. Okay? So, let me recap, okay? So, the moment... The amount of rumors, the rate at which they're being heard, it'll start decreasing the moment you reach about seven and a half people, half of the carrying capacity here. Okay? Because just think about it if you're covering more than half of the people, obviously you're going to run into more occasions where you might tell the same person that knows the rumor the rumor. Okay? Watch that a few times. It'll make a lot more sense when we get into the analytical piece. So here we go. This right here is the generic form of your logistic growth differential equation. Go ahead and write this down here. So a few things. Notice how this is the rate because it's d over dt at which your population is changing over t time. Logistic growth will always be with respect to time. Do not forget that, okay? It will always be the population changing at a rate over with respect to time. So on the right-hand side here, P obviously stands for population, okay? 
So that right there is just population. Now, K is just some random constant. You don't need to know what that is at the moment. But the only thing you really need to remember is, um, let me use a different color here. M is your maximal capacity. We call that the carrying capacity. So if you're looking at an equation, okay, make sure that it's factored in a way where it's always something on the outside, P, and something on the inside, minus P. If you have that form, this value right here will always be your carrying capacity. And I'll show you that in an example here, okay? But this is pretty much your logistic growth differential equation, okay? So here we go. You can paraphrase this if you want to, but definitely jot down some key ideas here. Um, I'll read this one. The growth rate of a population P of bears in a newly established wildlife preserve is modeled by the differential equation. DP over DT equals 0.008P times the quantity 100 minus P, where T is measured in years. Okay, so part A, what is the carrying capacity for bears in this wildlife preserve? Very straightforward. If you take a look at the highlight, it's set up perfectly. It's something P times something minus P. So right away, do we know what the carrying capacity is? Yep, it's right there. It's whatever's inside that quantity. So the carrying capacity is going to be 100 bears. Cool? Okay, part B. What is the bear population when the population is growing the fastest? So think about this graph, you guys. Draw it again. Your logistic growth looks like this. It grows fast and eventually it slows down. Do you guys remember where it starts to slow down? Pause and play when you're ready. It starts to slow down right at the point of inflection. Okay. Now, do you guys remember when that point of inflection is going to occur? When does the rate start to slow down? The rate starts to slow down at half of the carrying capacity. So, what is the bear population when the population is growing the fastest? That would be when there's 50 bears. Half the carrying capacity. Okay? Now here's the last one. And yes, it is this easy. You just have to know how to analyze what you have here, okay? Part C, what is the rate of change of the population when it is growing the fastest? What is the rate of change of the population? What the heck is that, right? Rate of change, you know, is D over DT. Well, we're trying to find the rate of change of the population. So we're trying to find out what DP over DT is when it's growing the fastest. Do we know when it's growing the fastest? Well, in part B, we know that the bear population will be 50 bears when it's growing the fastest. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make our population 50. So what's happening here is I'll write it out one time. You're pretty much just plugging in the population of 50 into P. Whatever that comes out to, okay? But remember, think about units, rate of change, population. How do you measure population? In this case, it's going to be uh, some value bears because that's population with respect to time in years because it says years there. All right? I don't have my calculator in front of me, but you guys can compute that. Now, these three questions are very popular. There are some outliers, which I'll show you in a second, but usually when you're dealing with a logistic growth problem, you will always see these three questions. Okay? Cool.
Here we go. Here's example two. Again, just jot down uh, what you feel is important. And pause and play whenever you're ready. In 1985 and 1987, uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources airlifted 61 moose from Algonquin Park, Ontario, to Marquette County in the Upper Peninsula. It was originally hoped that the population P would reach carrying capacity in about 25 years with the growth rate of dp over dt equals all that according to the model what is the carrying capacity okay pause and play when you're ready okay so what is the carrying capacity first i'm looking at my equation is it set up exactly how i want it to be is it something p times something minus p it is so in this case the carrying capacity is 1000 moose okay cool part b with a calculator generate a slope field let's skip that one not necessary part c solve the differential equation with the initial condition that p of 0 equals 61 and show that it conforms to the slope field Oh dear. Um, you know what? We'll skip this one too. Not that we can't do it, okay? Solving the differential equation would involve you guys um, separating your differential equations and then integrating and then isolating, okay? We did that in our slope fields problem last year with Calc AB. Uh, I'm not skipping it because it's not important. It's just. It's not the main piece of the pie for this lesson, okay? But we will have practice with that. Don't worry if you guys forgot, all right? Okay, so if I asked you guys, uh, what's the population of moose when it's growing the fastest? Okay, what would you guys say? What's the population of moose when the population is growing the fastest? Pause and play when you're ready. So you should say... 500 moose because that's exactly half of the carrying capacity okay now if i ask you well what's the rate at which the population is changing when it's growing the fastest what would you do pause and play when you're ready there you would just take your differential equation and evaluate it at 500 moose and then whatever you get there okay Here's a, a question for you guys. And really think about this one, okay? If, if I dropped or if I airlifted 12,000 moose into this park, what is going to happen? Really think about that. Articulate your thoughts and then play when you're ready. Okay. Now, if I airlifted 12,000 moose into this park based on this population model or this logistic growth model, okay? Eventually, if the carrying capacity is still 1,000, that means there's only enough room for at most 1,000 moose. So what's going to happen? A lot of moose are going to die very fast. There's not going to be enough resources or space for them to live. Okay? So I want you guys to remember that. If your carrying capacity is at 1,000, it doesn't matter if you start off with 2 moose or 12,000 moose. Eventually, it will get closer to that carrying capacity anyways. Okay, hopefully you were able to answer that correctly. Let's keep going. So here, now I could derive it for you guys, okay? If you separated your variables, so here's what I mean. If I divide by P and minus P on both sides, if I separate my variables, and I'm going to go ahead and move DT to the other side, Eventually, you're going to have 1 over P, M minus P, DP. 
equals k dt. You don't need to write this part down, okay? If you integrated, if you take a look at the left side there, that is where you incorporate the concept of partial fractions. But BC recently removed the concept that you will have to derive the logistic growth differential equations. So you don't need to know how to do it. But I encourage you to just watch a video. I'm not going to prove it here because it takes forever to do. But basically, when you solve for that differential equation, you will eventually... get to this. So what do you recognize in this equation that you had in your differential equation, right? So notice how this is no longer a rate, it's just the population. Whereas the top here is a rate because it's a d over dt. But I do notice there are some similarities that they still use the same m value, okay, which stands for what, right? It stands for your maximum carrying capacity. So all you guys really have to do, the big takeaway from this is, if they happen to give you just your population model, your carrying capacity is in the numerator. Now, if they happen to give you the logistic growth differential equation, your carrying capacity is inside that quantity, assuming that everything is set up properly there. Okay? That's really all you need from this, and I'll show you how we use that. Let's do a couple more. Again, just jot down what's important. I would probably jot down the equation. Um, pause and play when you're ready. The growth rate of a population P of squirrels in a newly established wildlife preserve is modeled by the differential equation um, dP over dT equals 0 0.006P times 240 minus P, where T is measured in years. Okay, what is the carrying capacity for squirrels? What is the squirrel population when the population is growing the fastest? And what is the rate of change of the population when it's growing the fastest? Do all three parts and then press play when you're ready. All three parts, okay? Press play when you're ready. Okay, carrying capacity for squirrels. So since the differential equation is set up properly, I know that this is going to be 240 squirrels. Okay, I'm... Doing a little bit extra there. You don't have to write, write squirrels there. You could just write 240. Um, what is the squirrel population when the population is growing the fastest? I know it's going to be at half the carrying capacity, which is 120. And what is the rate of change when it's growing the fastest? It'll grow the fastest when the population is at 120 squirrels. So I'll take my rate of change of the population, which is the differential equation, and I'll plug in 120 squirrels, half the population there. That's going to be 0 0.006, 120, times 240 minus 120, whatever that comes out to. But if they ask me for units, it's going to be squirrels per years. Okay, hopefully you got all three. Let's keep going. Okay, here's a different one. The spread of a disease through a community can be modeled with the logistic equation y equals 0 0.74 over all that, where y is the proportion of people who are infected. Okay, what percentage of the people in the community will not become infected? So, a few things here. What do you notice? Pause and play. You notice, I hope, that this equation is not a differential equation. It's not dp over dt, right? So this must imply that this is just the population model, meaning that that value in the numerator, 0 0.74, must be your carrying capacity. 0 0.74, in terms of a percentage, is actually, if you guys remember way back in middle school, that is 74%. But what the heck does that mean, right? So let's keep reading. Where Y is the proportion of people who are infected. So 74% are infected. Now let's take a look at the question. What percentage of the people in the community will not become infected? Okay. Pause and play when you're ready. 
If 74% are intended to be infected in the long term, if that's the carrying capacity, then that means the other remaining 26% will not be infected. Okay? So they, they switched it up a little bit by giving you just the original population equation. Um, but no big deal. Okay? Let's keep going. Okay, so here... Sometimes they will throw off your equation. How does this look a little bit different from your general equation here, okay? So remember, it has to fit perfectly. It has to be something P times something minus P. The issue here is that you got a 5,000 here. Actually, a 1 over 5,000, right? Because it's at the bottom. So here's what you do. You factor out a 1 over 5,000, okay? And uh, I'll use this example. Let's say we had sidebar. Let's say you guys had... Two P minus twelve P squared. Okay. If I want the inside to just be a minus P, what would I have to factor out? Right. Well, I would definitely have to take out one of the P's to get rid of that square, but to get rid of the 12, I would have to factor out the 12, right? Okay, so look, what you're doing in your head is you're dividing this by 12, but you also have to divide this out by 12. So my question to you guys is, what's going to go here? So right here is going to be 1 over 6, or 2 over 12 if you want to think about it. So if you want to take something out, you have to divide it. So think about this here. I have 2 minus 1 over 5,000 P. Right, I just wrote it a little bit differently. Well, if I want it to just be P, I would have to divide by 1 over 5,000. 1 over 5,000. But also take out that 1 over 5,000, right? Again, this looks weird at first. So don't worry if you don't see it right away. The second term, that's going to go away because you're dividing by the same thing. And you're left with that P. Take a look at 2 divided by 1 over 5,000. By a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that just comes out to 10,000. If you're ever unsure, distribute that back and see if you get what you have, okay? Um, so, sometimes you have to do a little bit of legwork to get your information. Okay, replay that if you guys need to. So, based on this population model right here, this green squiggly box, what is the carrying capacity? Uh... What's the population when it's growing the fastest? And what's the rate of change of the population when it is growing the fastest? So the same three questions. I'll let you uh, pause there, play whenever you're ready to check your answers, okay? So carrying capacity will be 10,000. Okay, when is it growing the fastest? Half the population, so that's going to be 5,000. And what's the rate at which the population is growing the fastest? So that's just going to be the differential equation evaluated when the population is at half the carrying capacity, whatever that is. All right. So I haven't seen it too often where you have to manipulate it, but we want to be ready for whatever the case is, okay? Here's another one for you to try. Go ahead and rewrite this so that it looks like the logistic growth differential equation okay pause and play when you're ready so here you would have to factor out 0 0.01 p so that you can get a minus p right there 
Now, what's going to be left? I would have to divide this by 0 0.01 and this by 0 0.01p. So what's 3 divided by 0 0.01? I don't know. Okay, but it'll be 3 divided by 0 0.01. Now, you could just type this in your calculator and figure it out. Or you could do it the long way. Uh, that is 1 cent. 0 0.01 is 1 cent, 1 penny. Pretty much 1 out of 100. And also, the way you read that is 1 one hundredths. How do we divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal. That comes out to 300. Okay. What's the carrying capacity? What's the uh, uh, population when it's growing the fastest? And what's the rate of change of the population when it is growing the fastest? Same three questions. Pause and play when you're ready. Carrying capacity is 300. It's growing the fastest at half the carrying capacity, 150. And the rate at which is growing the fastest, you would just evaluate it when the population is at 150, and that's it. Okay? Here's one more. Pause and play when you're ready. dp over dt. We're going to have to factor out a 0 0.002. That'll leave a minus p right there. I'm going to divide by 0 0.002p. So that's two thousandths. So if we multiply by the reciprocal, that's going to be 5 times 1,000 over 2. That's 5,000 divided by 2, which is 2,500 or 2,500. Uh, so the carrying capacity is going to be 2,500. Uh, it's going to be growing the fastest at half, which is 1,250. And the differential equation, the rate at which the population is changing when it's growing the fastest will be evaluated at half the carrying capacity. And you guys get your same answer. Hopefully that's enough repetition for you guys to see it. Um, it is easy. It doesn't get complex. But I'll tell you now, since this is one of the earlier things that we're learning, people tend to forget about it. So make sure that you're constantly going back in your notes because you want to retain this by the time you get to that exam in May. All right? Okay, and I'll leave these questions up here. Um, I'm just going to answer it. Pause and play whenever you're ready. Carrying capacity is going to be 30. It's growing the fastest at half 15 goats. And this is going to be whatever dp over dt is, t is evaluated at p equals 15. Now, you don't want to write it like that. You actually want to keep going, okay? I just don't have a calculator in front of me. Cool. Cool. Okay, here's a good one. Pause and play when you're ready. If four moose are introduced to this new habitat, what will be the maximum number of moose the habitat will support? So notice how they wrote it very differently, but basically they're asking us for what? Carrying capacity. So your answer would be 40 moose. Is it mooses, moose, or beasts? I don't know. Um, when will the rate at which the moose population would be growing the fastest? Half the carrying capacity. Okay, which is going to be 20. Now take a look at this last question. I'll read it, pause, and then think about it, then play when you're ready. A well-meaning but misinformed person suggests that by introducing 50 moose initially, there will be more moose available to hunt. Explain why this is faulty reasoning. Pause and play whenever you're ready. Based on this model, if the carrying capacity is 40, in the long run, as time goes on forever, the carrying capacity will not change. So even if you put more moose out than the carrying capacity, that just means that the moose are going to die out faster, meaning that it'll slowly plateau back to 40 moose anyways. Okay? Here's another one. Spread of a disease through a community can be modeled with the logistic equation. Or why is the number of infected uh, people after T days? How many people are infected when the disease is spreading the fastest? Okay, read that carefully and then play whenever you're ready, okay? So based on this population model or this logistic equation, I know that the carrying capacity is 600. 
Okay, but that's not what they're asking. They're asking how many people are infected when the disease is spreading the fastest. So I know it's going to be uh, half the carrying capacity, which is going to be 300. There you go. Here's another one. Read it. Press play when you're ready. Okay. So based on this equation here, uh, 90 percent will be infected according to the model what percentage of people in the community will not become infected so that means only 10 percent will not become infected okay here's one more and i'm giving you guys a lot of practice so that you can really let it sink in here okay pause and play when you're ready Okay, so based on this differential equation, I noticed that it's not written properly. So I'm going to factor out a 1 over 5,000. And eventually, if you do it right, you should get 10,000 minus P. Okay, so let's answer our question. Our initial population, P of 0, so when T equals 0, you have a population of 3,000 people in this case sure or species think about it what the heck are they asking for pause and play when you're ready it says what is the limit of p as t goes to infinity what does that mean logically conceptually when t goes to infinity when you're saying that you're pretty much saying as time goes on, or in the long run, the population will be. So how would you guys answer that, right? They're pretty much asking us for the carrying capacity. So make sure that you guys add that to your palette here. All right. Them asking for the limit of P of T as T goes infinity. That's the same thing as saying, well, what the heck is the carrying capacity? Because in the long run... How much of a population are you going to have, right? And based on this model, it's going to be 10,000, all right? Okay, here, slope fields. Which of the following differential equations could or would produce the slope fields shown below? So notice how it kind of increases, it dips up, and then it kind of slows down there, right? Okay. So, taking a look at these, here's what I would do. Population model is dp over dt equals kp times m minus p. A few things. Notice how the right-hand side only has the variable p. Remember, m and k are just parameters. m is the carrying capacity, and k is just a number. So, a differential equation of the population with respect to time is modeled by population okay not with time so if you take a look at this here dy over dx you wouldn't use the x term so i know that that's no good right and i know that a differential equation shouldn't look like the population model here so i could x out those two as well so the only one that makes sense is b because they both share that population variable whereas this one has one of each right so it's just they're just testing to make sure that you understand what the population model or the differential equation would look like okay okay Go ahead and do this one on your own. It may take some time, so don't rush it. Really read every statement there. Uh, read the equation and play whenever you have all of it done. Okay? So here we have a wolf population. I noticed that dp over t, dt is not uh, written in proper form, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 0.01p. So this comes out to 300 minus P if you factored it out properly. Okay, so let's take a look. Part I, the limit of P of T as T goes to infinity is 300. 
Okay, so we remember from that previous problem, that just means what, right? That means the carrying capacity is 300. Is that true? Yes, it does. So we know 1 is true. So we know it can't be B, and we know it can't be D. So it either has to be A, C, or E. Okay? The growth rate of the wolf population is greatest when P equals 150. Okay? We know that the growth rate for any population will always be the greatest when, right? During half of the carrying capacity. Well, what's half of the carrying capacity? Half of 300 is 150, so we know that has to be true as well. So we know it can't be A. So it either has to be C or E here. Okay. Part three, if P is greater than 300, the population of wolves is increasing. So here's a picture for you guys. If the carrying capacity is 300, right? They're saying if the population was greater than 300, let's say 3,000, what would happen to the population? So here it says the population of wolves is increasing. Would that population increase? No. Based on logistic growth, you guys, if you put in more that the environment can handle, they will eventually die out and get closer. So that is a flawed statement. It may increase temporarily, but it will not increase always, okay? So we know that it has to be C. Okay. I believe this is the last one. Here we go. So this is uh, straight from a FRQ. All right. Read it. Try it out on your own. All of it. You know, it's okay if you don't know all the parts. Remember uh, that strategy or the technique. Um, when you're taking this exam, it's okay to not get everything right. Okay. Um, I think you guys know, like, you don't have to get everything right because you took the AB exam. You don't have to get 100% to do well. So read it, press play whenever you're ready, and then I'll go over the results. Okay, so first thing I noticed that dp over dt is not written properly, so I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 1 over 12. So that should give me a 1 over 60p. Since this is question 5, I'm going to try not to use a calculator, okay? Because question 5, you're not going to be able to. Um, if I factor out a 1 over 12, I should get a 1 over, sorry, I should get 12 here minus P. If you're not sure, check in with your peers, all right? Okay, so let's read this question. Part A, if P of 0 equals 3, meaning if you started with 3 rabbits, what is the limit of this population as t goes on to infinity? What are they asking for? Carrying capacity. What's our carrying capacity? 12. Now, what if you start off with a population of 20? What's the carrying capacity? Doesn't change. Even if you overpopulate, the environment will fix it itself. Okay? Part B. If P of 0 equals 3, what value of p is the population growing the fastest okay so we know the population will grow the fastest when at half the carrying capacity half the carrying capacity is six cool okay so um for a second i thought we were in the classroom that's why i'm talking like that okay part c a different population is modeled by the function. Let's skip this one. Uh, only because I'm saving a separate week to really review separable differential equations. So we're not going to worry about that part, okay? Um, yeah, there you go. We'll move on uh, from part D as well, okay? And that's it. Okay, so let's go back to our FLT here. I don't have an FLT. Oops. Well, let's just talk about it. Okay. 
Um, logistic growth differential equation tells you a lot. So it gives you information about what the carrying capacity is. You guys should know what the population is when it's growing the fastest. Okay. Um, and you should know how to find the rate at which it's growing the fastest. And you should know that carrying capacity is the same thing as finding the limit of your population as T goes on to infinity. Okay. Last big takeaway. Remember, it doesn't matter if you underpopulate or overpopulate. It will correct itself. Okay. So the last thing I want to leave you with is I don't have the picture with me. But if you guys take a look at um, the world population, it's kind of crazy. I'll draw it for you guys here. Actually, let me see if I can pull it up. I th- oh, shoot, I don't know if I have it. But basically, I found data on the world population. And as of right now, it was... Uh, it was like that where where this is uh, 2020 and this is, I don't know, 7 billion people. It's kind of crazy because if you take a look at this graph, the concavities have already changed somewhere here, meaning that our population is slowing down in terms of the rate. Okay, so in sense, um, people are dying faster or people are making babies less, right? So if you think about that, that means, I don't know how long it's going to take, but that means we're approaching our own carrying capacity. And really think about what that means. And this is where you can kind of think outside the box here. What will that mean for our planet if we're getting closer to our carrying capacity? Okay? Think about that there. Personally, what that tells me is that if the world is overpopulating, um, one, a lot of scientists and a lot of people are going to come up or try to come up with more efficient ways of gathering more resources We might even try to uh, live on a different planet. If we're overpopulated, there might be more restrictions. If you guys remember back in China, not too long ago, they had that restriction to one child per family household, right? They might incorporate that. Um, If there's not enough space for everyone, war is going to happen, right? Like so many different things that can happen, which is kind of scary, But it kind of shows you that this is exactly what happens with every type of population model. The logistic differential equation is a very spot-on equation that always corrects itself no matter how much you start out with. So unless we change our environmental factors, unless we change the way we live or how we live... um, that's kind of crazy, right? Like in the next couple of years, we might see some drastic changes. Anyways, it's not to scare you guys. It's to inform you guys um, to show how everything is really connected and that um, we can, by looking at our data, we can make informed decisions on what we need to do to be a little bit more efficient with our resources, okay? All in all, um, hopefully that was a thoughtful conversation um, or it sparks some interest in, in your mind, but all in all, that's basically logistic growth. If you're an AP bio, you're going to learn that very soon. If you took AP bio last year, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay. Um, but yeah, text me if you guys have questions, that's it for the day.